Hello again, it's Alan Makin, the local history tutor for Knowsley Face, with a continuing series of short videos on the local history of Knowsley and Liverpool throughout the centuries. Uh, today's short video will be entitled The Three Graces. Um, that's uh, central Liverpool, the site of the famous Liverpool Pier Head. The Three Graces refers to uh, three iconic Liverpool buildings, the Port of Liverpool building, the famous Liver building, arguably Liverpool's most famous building, and the Cunard building, all built just over a century ago. Um, this short video will look at the site of the Three Graces, the Pier Head area, from the 1770s when the area was known as George's Dock, and eventually that was filled in and in the early 1900s became the site of the Three Graces, which reflected Liverpool's uh, growth as a port, uh, as a town, uh, to a city eventually in 1880, and how the docks became uh, big employers of the local population. So this video is entitled The Three Graces. Um, I'll quickly zoom in to a photograph said to be taken around 1860, um, very early for photographs, and this you can see the word George's Dock how busy it was. These buildings on the right are known as the Gory Piazzas and the St Nicholas Spire in the background. Uh, so this would be the site of the Three Graces and the Strands if we were to walk down it today. And you can see how busy the docks were, row upon row of the masks of the ship, the ship, the timber built ships at the time. Um, so we move on. Uh, sometime in the past 25 years, the term, the so-called Three Graces, have started to appear in the local press and people started to talk about the Three Graces. Um, they, co they coined this uh, term, the Three Graces. Uh, the actual Three Graces it is named after the original uh, Greek statue, uh, mythical Greek statue, the so-called Three Graces, who were the goddesses of charm, beauty and creativity. That's where the original Three Graces idea comes from. Um, the Three Graces, as I've already mentioned, comprise the following buildings. The Port of Liverpool building, which was opened in 1907. Um, the Liver building, opened in 1911. And the next building, the last of the Three Graces, was the Cunard building. That was opened during the actual First World War and officially opened in 1917. They're all located at the Pier Head. And the Pier Head was designated a World Heritage Maritime Site. Uh, so it's a World Heritage Maritime Site, reflecting Liverpool's uh, growth as a port uh, and its, uh, the expansion of the empire. At one time, Liverpool known as the, was the gateway to the empire. Uh, we'll also look at a map. Uh, this is a map from 1890, the late Victorian period, and the location of the Three Graces. So you can quite clearly says the name, the George's Dock, which is now the Pier Head, and the three um, outline buildings will become the Three Graces. So this is the Pier Head area back in the late Victorian period, with St Nicholas Church in the background and the famous James Street, Water Street, uh, familiar uh, Castle Street, familiar City Centre streets in the background, a hundred and thirty years ago. Right, so the uh, original site of the Three Graces, the Pier Head, uh, was the so-called George's Dock, which was opened way back in 1771. The dock was only filled in and abandoned in 1899. It was in existence for 130 years or so. Um, the dock was a response to Liverpool's growth, particularly with North America. Um, so the, the, the period of uh, dock growth from 1715 onwards. Um, so that's George's Dock. If you move on again, these are two. Uh, well, first one's an illustration, the second one's a photograph of the George Dock area, the site of the Pier Head. Um, so the George's Dock and the Gory Warehouses. The Gory was an island, still is an island off the west coast of Africa where they kept slaves. So that name, that slave connection with Liverpool still exists. They're the actual Gory Warehouses themselves, two giant warehouses built in 1801. Uh, one, two, three, four, six storeys high. So when they were built, they were one of the biggest warehouses in the world, right, right alongside the George's Dock. You can see the famous spire of St Nicholas in the background. The second is a photograph taken from the mid-Victorian period of 
1875 is George's Dock with again with St Nicholas Church in the background. So what you can hopefully see is the actual sandstone brickwork of the original George's Dock. The horse in the background was a taxi rank, Victorian taxi rank, and you can see some men, sailors, dockers on the dock side with St Nicholas Church in the background. So that's mid Victorian period. We move on to the actual buildings themselves. The first one we come to is the Port of Liverpool building, uh, also known as the Mersey Docks and Harbour Board. The photograph is from 1905 when it's in construction. You can see the scaffold around the building. Uh, again, you can see like taxi ranks. So you got your taxi in 1905 by the pier head. Um, this is a photograph two years before it was completed and officially opened in 1907. Um, so the Port of Liverpool building was designed by a gentleman by the name of Arnold Thornley and completed in 1907, the Edwardian period, and largely built in Portland stone. The building was the headquarters of the Mersey Docks and Harbour Board, and that's mentioned on the big gate, iron gates outside the building. It's a beautiful building, uh, say dating from the Edwardian period. Uh, the building is in the Edwardian Baroque style, and it is noted for the large dome on its roof. If you ever stand outside it with your back to the, the River Mersey and you look up, you'll see a dome on top of this building, which people have commented on in the past. Looks a little bit as a small version of St Paul's Dome in London, the famous St Paul's Church in London. The building, when it was opened in 1907, cost £250,000, and it was said it cost another at least another £100,000 for the interior. So the, the actual physical buildings cost a million pounds, but it was also lavishly decked out in its interior. This photograph it gives you an idea of the interior of the port of Liverpool. You walk through its main doors. It's got a famous dome. It's beautifully uh, coloured, stained glass windows. Uh, so in its day, it was an absolutely fantastically spectacular building, which showed off Liverpool's growth as a famous world port. Um, during the Second World War, a German bomb exploded in the basement of the building, uh, but thankfully it was fully restored after the war. So it's this absolutely beautiful building. It's still the the actual company, the Mersey Dock and Harbour Board, left in the 1970s. Um, the, the docks are now administrated from Seaforth Docks. Um, so the original company, the Mersey Dock and Harbour Board, has long since disappeared. We move on to the next, arguably most famous Liverpool building. A certainly iconic building appears in calendars and photographs. Uh, the world uh, image of Liverpool is the Royal Liver Friendly uh, Society connection. So this is the famous Liver building, the middle of the three graces. So the, it takes its name from the Royal Liver Friendly Society. It was formed back way in 1850s, a burial club by nine Liverpool workers. These workers used to knock on the door and were basically looking for give people a decent burial. Five years later, in 1855, uh, due to the expansion of the company, uh, it had agents in most towns in Britain, so it was very successful. The Royal Library Building, it was opened in 1911, just before the First World War, and was designed by a gentleman with the name Aubrey Thomas, William Aubrey Thomas, in 1911. Um, what it's famous for is... Uh, obviously, it's lava buildings. It's lava beds. It is faced in granite and is one of the world was one of the world's first multi-story buildings to have a reinforced concrete structure, which was very revolutionary at the time. The two sculpted clock towers are surmounted by domes on which the famous Liverpool mythical lava beds are perched. Uh, supposed to be, represent cormorants, local seabirds. They are made of copper, 18 feet high and tied down. And the legend is, if they ever fly away, Liverpool will be in trouble. The famous clock faces on the pier head, on sorry, on the Liver Building, are 25 feet in diameter, making them the largest public striking clocks in Britain, bigger than the famous Big Ben in London. And this is a famous photograph, appears in the local press. This is the, the board of the burial board, the, the Liver Insurance Company, launching around one of the 25 feet diameter dials. So they're having lunch just before it opens. Probably this photograph will probably date from about 1910. And opened in 1911. So you can see how grand the uh, the building was. Lastly, I'd like to have a look at the Cunard building. So the building was originally the headquarters of the Cunard Steamship Company. 
designed by a gentleman by the name of Willick and Thickness, uh, the company, two gentlemen, of Liverpool and completed in 1917. It's built of Portland stone and in the style of an Italian palazzo. It was in the border of this building that the decision was made to build the gigantic Queen Mary and Queen Elizabeth liners, uh, which were one of the biggest liners in their day. So this an idea of the original opening around 1917 of the Cunard building. So we'll leave it there as usual. Can I say, uh, please make any comments you wish and please stay tuned to Nosley Face and Nosley Recovery website for any tips on mental health and well-being. Thank you.